Welcome to Turn the Page, the official podcast of the Syosset Public Library. I asked at Libraries Turn the Page podcast. I am Jessica, your host, and I am here with an author who I have been a fan of for quite a while, and I am really excited to talk about this book. Please introduce yourself and tell us about Death at Morning House. Hi, I'm Maureen Johnson. I am the author of a lot of books over the years, including the Truly Devious Stevie Bell Mystery Series, 13 Little Blue Envelopes, uh, worked with Cassandra Clare, John Green, uh, Many people, but this is Death at Morning House, which is a new standalone mystery that takes place in upstate New York in the Thousand Island regions. It is a dual timeline mystery that takes place where uh, you try to figure out what happened to a family in the 1930s that had two kids die on the same day at a mansion on an island. And in the present day, of course, there are present day murders. There's a scent of candle that blows up. There are boats. There are jet skis. There's romance, there's trouble, and there's a lot of murder. Yeah, it is really fun. And I have to say one thing that I love, you know, being a New Yorker myself is that I didn't realize that the Thousand Islands region was in New York until I actually went there. You know, you hear about Thousand Island dressing and you just assume it's, you know, someplace really exotic. And it's just like, it's an, I mean, it is a really interesting area, but it is in upstate New York. It's in upstate Um, New York. Yeah. But it looks magical. And what really surprised me is when you go up there and it, so the Thousand Islands are basically 1800 islands on the St. Lawrence River between New York and Canada. Some of these islands are literally to be an island. I think you have to be one square foot around, surrounded by all sides, by water and have a tree or at least once have had a tree. That is the rule. So they may be that small, but some of them may just have one single house on them with no front yard, like a door that leads directly into the river, which is deep. Or they may be a much bigger island where it may have a mansion or a castle built on it because that was used to be this kind of millionaire's, billionaire's playground. And the water is kind of green, like tropical, beautiful, clear green. It is magical. It is gorgeous because I have been, yeah, I have been up there. And that is a really good description of it. And... As a New Yorker myself, as I mentioned, you know, it was kind of cool discovering it and then seeing that this book was set there made me even happier. Uh, But this is the story of many things, beginning with a date gone wrong. Uh, Marlo, our protagonist, has been in love with Akila for a very, very long time. Um, And she finally gets the chance to go on a date with her and she's really excited and she tries to be romantic and accidentally sets fire to a house yes <laughs> which uh, sends her on this trajectory to work at morning house which um or rather uh, the house uh, that, that we're talking about which was owned by this wealthy family and uh, has a group of mysterious people working there, other teens who have their own story. And it is thick with mood. It is so, so interesting. I really was very intrigued by Marlo's voice and just sort of how she kind of came to everything and her observations. But then there's also the kids who used to live in the house, uh, two of which, as you mentioned, Clara, who was the eldest, and Max, who was the youngest, died on the same day. And the story of their family was really interesting in that way that you read these stories about these wealthy families who are supposedly Mm -hmm. philanthropists who adopt all of these children and everything is perfect and wonderful. And then you just kind of wonder, like, was that really the way that it was? And just really set up very well, because on one side, you have the modern story, which is Marlowe's story, where... They live on this island. It's very touristy. She's going to work in this house and talk about it, learn about it, you know, be a guide. But, you know, she's heartbroken. And now she's meeting all these new kids who have their own heartbreak, which happened recently. And then you have the story of the other family, which was haunting in and of itself. So where did the idea for this story come from and the two timelines themselves? 
so the Stevie Bill mysteries, truly devious, uh, and those books all all have a, a dual timeline. I seem to fall into this dual. I like dual timelines, but I think that's because mysteries are always about looking back and trying to recreate the past, even if it's it could be a hundred years ago, it could be yesterday, it could be two hours ago. But you're always trying to unpick the past and figure out how you got to a point that seems impossible. How did you end up with a dead body on the floor? And why? I always start with why, because murder is a big deal. Like, I don't ever think it should be like, and then they just bumped him off. For no, I'm like, no, there has to be a really hard, compelling reason why things happen this way. Then I build out to who and why. So this book mostly takes place in the present, but you do look past at the events of this summer in 1932. And that ends up with a lot of death. And one of the things that this is about is how we talk about American history, like how we talk about the past, how we talk about, oh, it was so wonderful. And we all believed wonderful things. And all we ever did were just wonderful things. And what we don't talk about were the things that were not even like hidden, just out in the open. We were very into eugenics in the past. You could go to a state fair and go to the eugenics tent and get your baby's head measured. Like literally you could like get yourself a corn dog and then go to the eugenics tent. We had a lot of stuff that was way out in the open and we, we act like we, we don't. So that's a lot of like, it's about talking about what happened. We really, it's like, we always seriously, we need to talk about what happened and we need to talk about what's happening. That's how I always begin. And the islands are great because as a mystery writer, you're always trying to contain your people, get them into one place where they can't get out. Islands are good. So it kind of came together like that. And I wanted to write a person that was bad at romance, but was very romantic. Yeah, I would definitely. Uh, is lesbian disaster the uh, the term for poor Marlowe? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt really bad for her, um, even though it was in a way comical, you know, but also just, I mean, it's just so like teenage, you know, Yeah. that you have a crush for so long and then the actual chance of this happening actually happens which is so rare if you've ever been a teenager an awkward teenager like you should know if your crush ends up crushing on you back like mm -hmm. wow that is that is a, a lightning striking situation and it just was so, oh my goodness i felt so bad for her because it just felt like it was going too well and I'm like, I I know this is just not going to work out. How is this not going to work out? And I was like, oh, Marlo, I feel so bad for you. But she ran into a really interesting cast of characters um, in the Thousand Islands. And everybody kind of had their own little sense of mystery. You know, who you're supposed to trust, who you're not supposed to trust. There was also um, Dr. Henson, who was kind of overseeing everything. And between the two different stories, there was just so much lore. It was so rich that I just wanted to bathe in it. I wanted to know everything about it. And once again, you know, just the way that you kind of described the family, the Ralstons who lived at the mansion beforehand and, you know, just their trips to the city and, you know, the pictures, it really did feel like a tourist destination that I've been to. So, I mean, really, I just, I can't say enough about just the mood and the setting. When you do, because you obviously write a lot of different mysteries, do you always know why the murders happened? When yes. You start? Yeah, you do. Always, okay. always. That's the part where I start with. And I write up the end, basically, first. Like I write a solution document, I write a background document. Like here's all the things that happened to why. That may get refined as it goes on, but there's always a core reason. And then I, that basically, because mysteries are, they work from the center out. You have a center event, a murder, there's a body on the floor. And everything that happens, then there's a kind of spiral that goes around that body. That's just time spinning out. And the further you get away, the less you know about why the body's on the floor. So you only get little flicks of information that come off of it. That's what mysteries are. So you get to kind of pull these threads out because you get very little information. You get a slightly opened window. You get a chair that's in the wrong position. You get a glass on the table. You get, you, you get to pull these tiny threads 
and work them through your story. It's a delicate thing. It's very visual to me. As you can see, I'm moving my hands a lot because I really see it. I see it as a little spinning thing that I'm pulling threads off of. It's really fun to work through it as a reader too. I really, like I said, like I wanted to know everything about everybody who was in the house now and everybody who had been in the house. And I do have to say the whole plot line of the fact that you think that, you know, obviously the parents who adopted all of these children, you're obviously always told that these were philanthropists. They were so open about how they felt about eugenics and Mm -hmm. to think it, to think in a, you know, obviously like in our setting, as we should be horrified by that, but, you know, just like, even when they were questioned about it with the kids, it's like, no, we're going to get you a book on eugenics and explain why these questions yeah, it, are wrong. It was, it was just not. It, it was considered um, just like normal health science. It was just normal. Like, that's just how things are. That's just how things work. It was considered healthy. And it was, in fact, because the family's really into health food like early 20th century health food, which was grosser than you could possibly imagine. But that health food movement was tied into eugenics. It was, they were actually kind of companions. I cannot really stress how mainstream this was, but it was all considered part of healthy living. So, and uh, there were a lot of other movements that were connected to this. Like it's, we have their stuff that we, I'm like, we, we need to learn. We need to, to be taught that we actually did this. It's really important <laughs> You learn from your mistakes, not your victories. I mean, yes. And as you say it, it reminds me of how the Kellogg Cereal Company is actually yes. connected to all of that. You know, these yeah. are things, these are things that we we don't we don't think about. And this was just a really, again, it was a really good mystery and also a really good way. I commend you of just pointing in that direction and being like, hey, here's a thing we should know about. You know, and this was for a YA audience. Yeah. And there was actually a lot of stuff. I toned it down because there was stuff that was originally in the draft that I was like, oof, like I had to tone it down because it was too grim. But I could go into, I, the trouble is with this, I could go into like two hours of here are all the little things. Like if you read in The Great Gatsby, for instance, there's a book that's referenced. Like they talk about this. Like they're like, hey, you should read this book by this guy. It's great. It's about, you know, you there's the, yep. it's sprinkled throughout. <laughs> it really, it really is. And I and I will say I am um I am a big fan of The Great Gatsby. Uh as so you know that you know what I'm general. talking about. Yeah. I do, I know exactly what you're talking about because it's it's funny. That is that is one of my it's it's like either a, you love it or you hate it classic and I was one of those people who like immediately was like yes so I know exactly what you're talking about the scene where yeah Tom Buchanan is talking about this book like it's the best thing ever and it is a seriously racist book and it what I love called, just yeah, yeah the, it's a big racist textbook and he's like here it is here you should read this this is what it's all about and that was how things were yes yes <sighs> yes and you know I, I liked that the cast of Death at Morning House, the modern cast, are very diverse as well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was it was a really just interesting contrast. You have this mystery in the past and then you deal with all of this and then you have a lot of stuff that was going on now through the eyes of queer characters, you know, different uh, various races. It You know, it felt obviously very grounded in the reality that, you know, I live in now, um, especially, you know, our community has, our, our community has diversified since I was a kid, I grew up here, you know, obviously not completely, but it, there really was a very uh, good contrast between the, between the two. And everybody was very interesting as well. I mean, what I wanted to do was make a classic fair play mystery that you can solve without any outside information. You know, there is... There are weird things. I like weird historical stuff, like tantalizing things, but it's all the all the information. That's the bottom line is always there. All the information needs to be there. You need a chance to solve it. There are actually two different mysteries in here you get to solve. And, you know, you have a you have a shot. You absolutely can do it. Well, I loved it. There are several people who are wondering is this really a standalone or are we going to see yes. more of these characters? Ah, No, this is a standalone. There is more Stevie there. I'm working on the next Stevie Bell right now. 
I want it because I think mysteries have basically two modes is one is the standalone one and done situation where you meet a group of characters in a case, but then you have your detectives, the people that move through multiple cases and Steve, I wanted to do a detective with a multiple case. That's, that's why I made Stevie. But then I also want to do the classic standalones as well. I just love all mysteries all the time, 24 seven. I was a mystery kid. I'm a mystery adult. <laughs> Well, this was a super fun one. So Stevie is what you are working on next, the next Truly Devious? I'm working on a, the new Truly Devious, as well as a new, a separately, a dossier mystery, which is a little book you'll be able to get. And it's like a case book that's like, there's this case you have to solve. And here are the files and here are the photographs. Except it will be illustrated. The photographs will be illustrated, but they're amazingly done. And you get to solve the case by reading through and the solution will be in the back. So... That's going to be called the You Are the Detective books. And the first one's called The Creeping Hand. And that'll be out next year. And I'm finishing that up right now. And then Stevie as well. Mysteries all the time. Go, 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 mystery. Thank you so much. This was super fun. Maureen Johnson, I am really happy to be talking to you. And hopefully we'll chat again soon. Thank you so much for having me. Once again, this was Jessica with Syosset Libraries Turn the Page podcast. Death at Morning House should be available. Check it out at your local library. Go to your library and use it. If you don't use it, you lose it. Use it. Go in. Use use your library or your or your local independent bookstore. I love that's also good. Both. Both. Why not? Both is good. There's no reason why you don't go to both. None. Exactly. A hundred percent. Maureen Johnson, thank you so much. And we are going to close this chapter of Turn the Page. It's time to close this chapter of Turn the Page. Join us for the next episode.